Welcome back um, to, to Edinburgh Festival Live uh, in uh, beautiful Newtown Theatre. Uh, if you would like to contact us, just uh, write, or find our, our website, which is www.sbctvc.co.uk. Um, you can always uh, also find us on uh, Twitter, which is at uh, edfest. Uh, underscore life. Okay, uh, our our baking guru will be baking in a, in a moment again. But uh, before that, I would like to invite Chris Stokes. Hey. Bravo! <laughs> Hello, Chris. Hello, mate. How are you? Okay. Okay. Oh God, those. Ah. Nice to see you. It's been a while, isn't it? Yeah, a nice amount of time. Yeah. How many Pokemon have you caught? None. You've caught no Pokemon. No Pokemon. Wow. Um, and I don't. I think they might cut out that you caught Pikachu, which I think is appalling because that's an achievement, isn't it? Yeah, I did. I did catch a Pikachu, guys. <laughs> oh, yes. and uh, also, look at us, bloody oh, shoe yeah. brothers. Oh God, look at us uniting. Even though we're from different countries, it doesn't matter. I lived in France, though. That's something you didn't know about me. You did live in France. Yeah. You know what? I'll let um, I'll oh, let yeah, we've got ask you some questions. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely to see you. That's fantastic. You know, ladies and gentlemen, we, we have uh, two comedians who can interview each other. <laughs> that, you know, <laughs> it probably will be very interesting. But uh, anyway, uh, Chris, um, before we got into nitty gritty of the of the of the your current show um for those who haven't seen you yet on on stage uh can you tell us a little bit about yourself yes i uh, uh i'm older than i look so all of my material is about being a, a sort of man approaching middle age trapped in the body of a schoolboy is uh what it is, yeah. Which confuses pedophiles <laughs> so much. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and confused me already. Drugs, <laughs> it confused pedophiles. You. Yes. You said that after I said yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> it, but, but anyway, um, a, how you can become to be uh, uh, the Bruce Wayne? The Bruce Wayne. Yeah. Uh, now, what's happened there, Tomek, is, is that you've got an out-of-date press release. <laughs> uh, Thank you uh, very we, uh, much. Uh, we, uh, we, have to, uh, uh, we have to talk about what the show is going to be about. Uh, we have to decide it in about April. And obviously, the fringe doesn't happen till August. And what, what's happened is, is that I've rewritten the show in the last four months. And that is a relevant piece of information. Uh, but I think what it uh, pertains to is, is that the show is about uh, natural hostility towards each other. And as a French man, I think it's a British trait. Yeah. So our natural, ho it's, it's sort of like bubbles under the surface. If somebody says to you, how are you, have a nice day, you wonder why they've said it. Sort of like, what do they know that I don't? And uh, I think if you are presented with any sort of, any level of hostility, the best way to cope with it is to hold a mirror up and do it back so that people have consequences and they see their ref behavior reflected back at them. And the reason I said about Bruce Wayne is because it's the same way that Batman has to uphold the law by breaking it. The way to combat rudeness is to be just as rude back. So I've started to become a man as Batman. And your parents got murdered. They did, yeah. So there's, there is that <laughs> as well. But, but it, does it work? <laughs> I mean, it, I, th I like to think I'm keeping their memory alive. By... Um, by doing it, but... And you don't know this about Chris, but uh, he does dress up as a giant bat. Well, they left me a massive house. <laughs> so I had a... He, I've loves, got, he loves fancy dress, don't you, Chris? Mm. I just haven't got the... I haven't got the pecs or the, the guns, really. But he, he draws them on, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm completely confused now. Uh, you know, what, what this show is all about. Mm. Take everything we've just said with a pinch of salt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's a, it's, it is about politeness and manners, and about how it, but it's become a bigger thing, right? So now it's more to do with how we as a species view ourselves 
and our place on the planet and how that informs how we behave against each other. Because it's very different. Sometimes people will tell you that we have transcended the animal kingdom and we have evolved beyond that and we've become self-aware and sentient. And yet it depends what argument they want to win. Because if they want to win a different argument, like uh, they want to they justify eating hemp, eat all the meat that they eat, they will say, oh, it's natural. And it's kind of like as if we're still beasts. And we've got to pick a side, I think. Are we still animals or have we evolved beyond it? Huh. So it's about that. You, you know, I, I just, I just when, I, when I first came to this country, you know, 30 years ago, and uh, I had a little bit of this kind of experience. With British people? With British people. Because, you know, I, uh, when I, uh, you know, I've been asked constantly, how are you, how are you? And no one didn't care how I am, mm. to, to be honest. So that I started to answer, uh, I'm surviving. And that people they just started to say, oh, wait a second. Especially with that accent. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but to Mac, also remember that half of the population voted out of Europe. So there is that sort of like horrible, they hate immigrants. But and, it's great. No, it's great to be in this country. And 30 years ago, we were only 10 years into being in the European Union. So I think maybe that's when they were getting itchy feet. Yeah, that, yeah they, they said alien. Is that why yeah. you're going back to Europe? Uh, no, I'm not going not back to Europe. I'm bringing uh, Scotland back to Europe. That's very nice. Absolutely. Yeah. We are going to have it. And, and I hope that you all comedians will, will help us with this because, you know, the, what is going on on the other side is joke. On the other side of? Of the border. Oh, you mean in England? Yes. Okay. I understand <laughs> what you mean now. I'll do my best, Tomek. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Anyway, let, let's go back, guys, to, to, to you and to, and, to, and to your show. Um, so, you, you know, f how do you, how do you uh, see the difference between being in Edinburgh or being on the road or being in any other festival? It's really strange because we come, we come to Edinburgh for a month and it is genuinely the, the only time. We, 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 we spend a more consistent amount of time in the Edinburgh flat than we do in our own flats when we're on the road because you're away for sometimes. You can, st you can be at home for three nights, then you have to go somewhere again. And it's, we, in Edinburgh, we're in here all in or for a, a sustained period of time. And I think that's why, despite how all of the, uh, you know, the hoo-ha and everything, there's a sense of calm within us just because we go back to the same place each night for a month. That's, that, that's great. And, and it, you know, I, I always found that uh, being on the stage for many, many days in the same place is, is very, very uh, useful mm. for, for development. So I just believe that, that your a show is developing as well, both of you. It is nice actually to be in the same room for a month yeah. because if you're traveling around and every stage is different and stuff, you have to improvise with like the stuff that's around you. But if you're in the same room, you can't improvise with the stuff that's around you because it's just the same boring room every day. So that's pretty fun. I was, yeah. So where's your show and when? It's at the Underbelly Med Quad in the Clover Room uh, at 10 past eight every night except for the 15th. Fantastic, thank you very much. Big applause, ladies and gentlemen. Yay. And now we have to go to our Harry Mary. Harry Mary, could you cook us something nice? Oh, I'd love to cook something up with you, Tomek. I really would, believe me. Oh, God. So, earlier on I said we're going to do a wonderful spam and custard flan. But before we start, I could do with a bit of help from somebody in the audience. Uh, could, could we get someone up here to, to give me a bit of a hand? Oh, yes, a volunteer. Oh, wonderful, wow. wonderful. <laughs> Big round of applause. Wonderful. Now, and doesn't she look fantastic? Doesn't she, viewers, look? Give us a well, well, all man-made fibres, very cheap, but nonetheless looks quite well turned out. <laughs> What's your name, my dear? Megan. Sorry? Megan. No. Megan. <laughs> now, I'll just call you Thingy, all right? So... The first important thing with a, a custard and spam flan is to create the base for the flan, the flan case as it's known in the business, you see. So, first of all, if you could help me with this, if you could pour some of this flour into the basin. That's it. Good girl. A little bit more. A little bit more. Wonderful. It's super. Now you hold the basin. All right. She's very good, isn't she? And then we're going to pop some milk in there, you see, just like that. A little bit of milk. Lovely. And, of course, my signature touch, a little dash of wine. Beautiful. And now we're going to mix the whole thing together, aren't we? Yes. So, you've got to, 
You've got to beat it very, very hard. Beat it very, very hard till it goes nice and stiff, like that, you see. And then soft and gentle till it goes soft and fluffy, like so. And then after that, what we're going to do is we're going to pop this in the fridge for about three days or so, and then it will be nice and crispy and ready for the next part of the recipe. So, we'll be back in the next part to show you how we complete this wonderful dish. Thank you very much, Thingy. This is wonderful. Thank you. Bravo. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mary. And um, this is uh, the end of our second part. And I hope that you'll come and see us in the third part. See you in a couple of minutes. It's going to go off, man. It's going to go big. Ladies and gentlemen, can right. we give Tomic Stand. a little cheer? Give him a cheer. Two, two, three. Microphone check one, check two, two, three. Right now, right now, we set in the scene. Tom McMahon, this is like your hopes and dreams. So we doing this like focus. Okay, we about to do this. Showbiz, go play. Tell the people, man, first set the scene. Stop the beat, Tom Mac. Give us one of your dreams. I want to be a watchmaker. Yeah! That's right, we drop a straight hip-hop. Tomic to my right, man, kick him with the TikTok. It's off. Yeah, you know, man, Boskin. He just like, watch this. Yep, I got the watches. What? Yeah, man, you know that the vibe's hot. Tomic is a man who does not like the eye watch. Yeah, that's right, man. Go, kid. Watch him when he got the watch. Oh, bit. Roll it. Yes, that's right. Keeping it real. What would he make the watches from? Possibly steel. Yes, sir, man, man. It's bliss. Tomic, man, literally keep it off the wrist. It's time for us to just check a number two. Tom Make let the next one through. Oh, I don't want to be an actor anymore. Why? That's not oh, a no. dream. That's terrible. That's, That's a retirement plan. Come on, no, because Tom, I've focus. done this for 44 years enough. What, was your, what do you want to do now that you're not an actor? Uh, I want to retire. You want to retire? Yes. What do you do in your retirement, brother? Nothing. Yeah, that's right, it's a disaster. Tomic just retired, he will never be an actor. Yeah, that's right, man. Yep, it's a rave.